On this Q&A, we've got questions about introducing our guests to pricing, color in the salon, and what to do about guests that come early. Ask away, it's FNF Q&A. Hey everybody, welcome to FNF Q&A 38. As always, I'm Benjamin J. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Um, Super Bowl weekend. Uh, I hope everybody had a good time. Uh, me and my friends, we had way too many Doritos. Uh, we made a mission to go out and get every flavor of Doritos uh, possible, and that was a really bad decision, and I do not want to see another bag of Doritos, like, ever. Um, in terms of the salon, um, we only have two spots left for our, our class with Carlos, so if you guys are interested in that, I would really recommend jumping on it because once they're done, they're done. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anything else? Okay. This stylist asks, how do you introduce price point into the conversation during consultation? I feel like I always forget to talk about money before a service. It's important for us to not be afraid of price, okay? Um, there, there, there's no reason for us to fear what the price that we're gonna say the service is because the guest has already chosen that the, that price point is okay for them. And what I mean by that is the guest has done the research, right? They've probably looked at other salons, maybe they've already been to see you before. They know what the, the menu scale is for the services. When I'm having a consultation with my guests, I don't generally bring up price point. Um, I think that the type of clientele that we cater to is not so price sensitive that they are going to be afraid of something, but I will list out the type of services that we are going to do. So if I had a guest that was down for, let's say she booked for basic color and a cut and style, but my recommendation is that I'm going to add a highlight or a shine treatment. I would say that. I would say, okay, so, you know, Brie, today what we're going to do is we're going to do our color, a partial highlight, and a cut and style. I feel like at that point I've kind of done my duty and I laid out what today's experience is going to look like. If she wonders what the price is, she can ask back to me. At the same time, if I was in a more price sensitive salon or area, what I might say is, you know, Brie, my recommendation today would be to do our color, our highlight, and a cut and style. Um, Generally speaking, those three services, your total today would be about $210. Something then to just let her know. I don't think that there's any reason to be afraid of it though. And uh, the more open with our guests and the better the communication is, the, whole, the better the experience is gonna be because what you don't wanna do is just say, okay, and then have them get up to the front desk and then you just drop the bill and be like, all right, have a great weekend and then leave your reservations team to deal with it. This owner asked, how do you go about having a I'm going to answer this backwards. So, uh, how do you get one written up? Um, I'm sure that there is somewhere that you can just Google this and find the answer to it. Um, if you really wanted to like, push the envelope and really find something, if you have an attorney, uh, you can try and have them sign something up. Um, the reason that I am, uh, I guess I don't have a great answer for how to write one up is because we don't have one. Uh, the reason that we don't have one though is I don't believe that it's really going to save you anything. Um, if something goes wrong and you do the color and you don't get the results that you want, or uh, you know, heaven forbid you, you injured the guest or, or, or their hair fell out or something like that, having them having signed uh, uh, this type of a release, I don't think is really going to actually protect the salon or you in that situation. Um, I also think that it sets the tone somewhat negatively, like, hey, just so you know, we're not gonna be able to do it. I think that what's more important is setting realistic expectations for the guest through your communication and letting them know. Um, if you're in a situation where you don't think that you're going to be able to get there with the hair's integrity in the best, in the best shape, then I wouldn't do it at all, regardless of having uh, a form or a, a release you know, I, I remember when I was in school, uh, and I think most schools probably have guests sign something because, you know, you're learning, it's a learning experience, possibilities of something going wrong. 
but I know that even in school situations, that doesn't always protect uh, the schools. So my best advice would be that if you're in a situation where you feel like you're not going to get the results, you can explain it, but if you're not going to be able to get the results without the integrity of the hair and something could possibly go wrong, don't even open that, that Pandora's box. Just, just leave it and say that you can't do it. The stylist asked today, I tried my very first root stretch slash color melt. I played my base color and melted it into the ends. When it was processing, it looked great. But when I saw a line of demarcation during the blowout, I had to go back and highlight. But what do I do wrong? I feel like I never want to try this technique again. Without seeing the actual technique and the actual application, it's really hard to answer a question based off of the technique. Um, just reading the question and the way that it's worded, I would say that when you were blending from your root through to the ends, it wasn't melted totally fully through, right? And so that's why we ended up with a line somewhere, somewhere in there. I think that the bigger challenge here is one, when we have a vision for how something is supposed to come out and it doesn't come out that way, it's always gonna be disappointing, right? And so I think that we have all been in those positions where something frustrated us so much that we, we felt like I didn't wanna do that technique again or I, I don't wanna do that look again or whatever the case may be. But I think that the bigger challenge is when we are doing new things, and this is, this is by no means just on this one stylist, this is on, I think, everybody, is we see things online, we go to classes, we want to do them, but we don't want to practice them, right? I saw it once, I saw it at a show, I'm going to do that on, you know, you have that experience where you see, you see something, and like before you, you've even seen it finished, you're like, oh, I know exactly the guest that I'm going to do this on. And I think that there is a challenge of basically practicing on paying clients, right? Like, if this is the first time doing this technique, the proper time to have done this as a first time thing would have been on a doll head, on a mannequin, you know, doing on some downtime or on a weekend where you could practice it and perfect it. And I know that it, it's, it's a challenge for everybody because we think, oh, I don't have time for this or I don't have time for that but you make time for what's important. And I would say in this situation, this is a color technique that is very, very popular right now. And this would be something that would have great value in being practiced. So uh, in terms of what went wrong, I don't have a totally clear answer for you. I would say that it didn't meld properly, but in terms of going forward, practice, 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 and practice great things. And then you will eventually get the end results that you want to have. This owner says we often get to work two hours early to do team building meetings and just get stuff done. However, it is often cut short by guests who sometimes come in 45 minutes early. Is it rude to keep our doors locked until we open? P.S. We're on an upstairs suite so people can tell when we're in the salon. I'm very impressed that you're able to get in there and get your team in there two hours early to be able to do the team building and the meetings and, and everything that needs to be getting done beforehand. And that is fantastic. Um, is it rude to keep our door locked until we open? I would say it is not, to be honest. Like if I need to get to Target, Target opens at 10, I don't get to walk in at 9.15 and say I'm ready to, to buy or check in or like I just needed something. Um, I think that we often come from a service, service first mentality and you know we're looking at this in a situation of like, we don't want to give bad service, right? Bad service would be not letting the guest in the door. I, I think that part of the reason that the guests continue to come 45 minutes early is that they continue to get served 45 minutes early. So I, I would say there's a couple ways to tackle this. One, if you want to continue to let them in, I don't know if there is a separate area in the salon where they could hang out and then you guys could have your meeting removed to another side. Um, that's one option. Uh, a second option might be, instead of just an open or a closed sign, maybe we have a third sign that says education in progress or uh, team building going on. Something along the lines to let people know that there's a reason uh, <laughs> or get blinds so that people can't tell that you're in the salon. Um, I, I don't know that you need to have an excuse as to why the doors aren't open. If you guys open it at 10 and people are there at 9.15, um, you're just not open yet. And so, you know, you might, you might get some angry people saying, how come you didn't open the doors? I've been waiting. But if you just simply explain that we had things going on that we weren't ready for you, hopefully they'll be able to see that. So 
Uh, this was FNF Q and A thirty eight. I greatly appreciate uh, you guys watching this episode. I would love any comments, any shares, and anything. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. You guys are who make the show. And uh, as always, you can follow me online. And please subscribe to Form and Function online as well. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks.